finding a laptop for your music production is a challenge, but finding a budget laptop around 500 euro is an even bigger challenge. In this video, I'll take a look at those challenges, what you have to bear in mind and name you five models that are suited for music production. Hey guys, welcome back. How are you doing? I hope you're doing marvelously well. In this video, I'm gonna talk about budget laptops for music production. If you are not interested in what I have to say about what you have to look out for, then you can skip to the end of the video. I will blend in the time. When it comes to computers for music production, I've divided them in four categories. The first one is the budget category. That is the category that we're talking about in this video. You can think of the i3 processor. Then the mid-range category, that's the i5 processor. Then the high-range category, that's the i7 processor. That is what is optimal for computers for music production. And then the i9 processor in the category, ridiculously overpriced. Before we dive deeper into it, I want to start off with a little disclaimer. Uh, first of all, budget laptops are built to be cheap, so the life expectancies of these machines are minimal at best. Also, they are not the most optimal configurations for making music, they simply lack the power to do it properly. The margin on a laptop for the manufacturer and the store is minimal. Uh, profit on a laptop for a store, for example, can be 30 or 40 euros. That means talking long with you about that machine or giving you support on that machine, they don't like to do that. That will cut so deep in their profit. Manufacturers take another approach. They let software makers sponsor them. That's the reason why there's so much junk software on your computer when you buy it. A trial version of McAfee on your computer? Now you know why. Deinstall that software immediately if it runs in the background. That saves you a ton of CPU cycles. And McAfee is even one of the good guys. The processor. The ideal processor for music production is the i7 and the i9 processor. Cheaper alternatives but slower alternatives are the i5 and the i3 processor. Don't choose a Celeron, that lacks power entirely. But what is power? For example, when I take the Serum plugin, I can run 30 instances on an i9 processor, for example. Uh, 15 on an i7 processor, uh, 5 on an i5 and only 2 on an i3. Before I have to render out everything to audio file. If that rendering out takes up 5 minutes at a time and if you change one note you have to render out again 5 minutes, that gets annoying after a while. The memory. 8 gigabytes of memory is the die hard minimum. A lot of laptops nowadays come with 4 gigabytes of memory. You need to expand that immediately. Then the hard disk. Yeah, that's a biggie. Make sure that you have an SSD in your computer because the SSD is the fastest disk there is. But the problem is a lot of laptops come with 128 gigabytes of memory or 256 gigabytes of memory. But that's too little. You need at least 500 gigabytes to work properly you will run out of space eventually. It's not a question if, but when. Make sure that you can swap the hard disk later for a bigger one. With Apple, you can't. For a temporary solution, you can work with external drives, but working with external drives is a pain in the... Uh, Make sure that you have an SSD over PCIe or M2. You can choose a spinning platter drive in your laptop to have more storage capacity, but if you want to change it later for an SSD, you have an old school SATA connection in your laptop, which is bottlenecking the maximum speed you can get with an SSD. An SSD is still faster than a spinning platter drive over SATA. Make sure that you have a spinning rate of 70 to 100 RPM. 5400 RPM is too slow. The screen. Make sure that you have a 15 inch screen to produce your music with. 13 inch is too small. I know what I'm talking about. I have a 13 inch screen on my MacBook and I have a little bit of a problem. If you choose a 13 inch screen, make sure that you can connect an external monitor to overcome that problem of that small screen. Thunderbolt. Regretfully, a lot of budget laptops don't come with a Thunderbolt connection. 
you need that to have a sound card with a low latency. You have to opt for USB alternatives. I made recently a video about the Focusrite 2i2 that is a USB interface. Go and watch it. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you already haven't and hit the bell button to get notifications. Secondhand or refurbished. That can be a good option for a small budget, but bear in mind you are also buying someone else's misery. If you buy secondhand, make sure that you wipe the hard drive of your computer first and install Windows. That makes sure that you don't have any viruses. Also, maybe someone else installed programs you are maybe not aware of, but that are clogging up your CPU. Also, deinstall all the bloatware that your manufacturer installed on the first installation of Windows. You need every single CPU cycle, especially when you have a budget CPU with less power. Make sure that you have or can find all the necessary drivers for your notebook of all the devices that are in your notebook. The problem is that you don't always can find what you're looking for, especially some vague Chinese products that are sold under another name. Then refurbished. Well, refurbished is another way of saying secondhand, but on top of being secondhand, it was also broken. You hope that they fix the issue that was broken and not a problem related to that. And on top of that, make sure that you get a proper warranty, for example, a year. There's a reason why they are so careful with that warranty. Really important is that you look at expandability. In some notebooks you can add or swap memory later, uh, probably also the hard disk. But that's where it ends with laptops. Mm, you can't really change the screen or the keyboard or the CPU for that matter. I have compiled a whitelist and a blacklist. The items on my blacklist I think you should avoid. First of all the brands MSI, Acer, Lenovo, Samsung and Medium. Also, I don't recommend the XPS series of Dell and the Inspiron series of Dell. Also, I wouldn't recommend the Chromebook. I have also compiled a white list and I think with item on the white list you have the most chance of success. First of all, HP, then Microsoft, Toshiba, Asus, Dell with the Alienware series, but the newer ones, not the older ones, especially not the older ones. And of course, Apple with a MacBook. I have compiled a list of five models that spec-wise come close to being a good budget laptop for music production. The first model on my list is an HP, the HP 250 G6. There are more types with that same model number. This one has a CPU, an i3 CPU uh, with two cores, a two gigahertz, four gigabytes of memory. So you need to expand that immediately to eight. Worth mentioning is that you can only expand to maximum of eight gigabytes total. Then 256 gigabytes of SSD and it has a 15 inch monitor and an HDMI connector for an external monitor. The second model on my list is also the HP 250G6. It has an i5 CPU, but of the seventh generation, two cores, 2.5 gigahertz, four gigabytes of RAM, so expand that, and 240 gigabytes of memory and a 15 inch monitor. The next model on my list is the Asus VivoBook, to be precise, the K406 UA BM141T with an i3 processor, two cores, 2.4 gigahertz, four gigabytes of memory, uh, that's too low. So expand 128 gigabytes of SSD, that's too low. 14 inch monitor and it has an HDMI connection for an external monitor. Number four on the list is an HP, the Notebook 14, the CF02, 00ND with an i3 processor with two cores, 2.2 gigahertz, four gigabytes of memory, 128 gigabytes of SSD, 14 inch monitor, so that's too little, and an HDMI connection for an external monitor. The last model on my list is the Asus VivoBook, the R540UA. The DM123T with an i3 processor, two cores, two gigahertz, four gigabytes of memory. So expand 128 gigabytes of SSD. So that's too low, a 15 inch monitor and an HDMI connection for an external monitor. If you want an overview of the things that I've talked about in this video, I've created a cheat sheet for budget laptops with the five models that I've talked about in this video. Uh, link in the description below. 
I love to make content on YouTube available free of charge, but in order to continue to do that, I need some financial support. I hope you want to support me for as low as $1 a month on Patreon. My Patreon page is patreon.com slash DexterClark with two X's. If you want to pick my brain about something or for coaching, you can also book a Skype call. Don't forget to like, subscribe and hit the bell. And I hope to see you in the next video. Thank you for watching. Bye.